Then let me ask about one other thing that you said already, which was that around October 7th, you thought that the Palestine question was dead. Mm -hmm. Are you referring to the fact that people weren't interested in reading about it, they didn't care, or that around October 7th, you thought that nothing was going to happen in Gaza, that the situation was lost? I think it was both, but the, sec the first was a consequence of the second. Namely, uh, if you recall, people's memories are probably a little bit vague now. By October 6th, the only item on the international agenda regarding the Middle East was what was called the Abraham Accords and the expectation that Saudi Arabia was next in the queue, next in the queue to join in and then there would be a pact among the uh, Arab powers uh, a pact to fend off the threat posed by what was called back then the axis of resistance, which basically meant Iran, Hezbollah, Syria, and the Houthis. Um, and Palestine was off the agenda. It looked like it was over. This pact would be signed above the heads of the people of Gaza, they were, they were going to be left in Gaza, Gaza concentration camp. They were going to be left there to just languish and die. That's what they were fated for on October 6th. And it looked like it was going to work until uh, the leadership of Hamas, and we don't quite know who made the decision. We don't even know if it came as a surprise to their external political leadership, whether it was a decision just made by Mr. Sinwar and his closest, uh, his inner circle. They opted for a throw of the dice. They just wanted to shatter the status quo. They hadn't a clue what might come of it, what's going to come next. They just wanted to shake, shatter, not just shake, shatter the status quo. You can say in retrospect, I wouldn't call it an error because I don't think they had any particular expectation of what would come of it.